In this video, I will be talking about an ethics topic, specifically communication and patient-centered care. Before I get into today's video, please remember that if you enjoy my channel and want to support the channel financially, please click the join button, which can be found underneath every single video on my channel homepage and as the first link in the description of any video. When you click the join button, you will provide a secure monthly donation through YouTube for $4.99 a month, and in exchange for that donation, you will be a Dirty Medicine member. You get some cool perks as a Dirty Medicine member, including the use of the Dirty Medicine logo, which will appear after your username anywhere you comment on the channel. Now in today's video, we are going to be talking about communication and patient-centered care. And for those of you who have been taking practice questions, or perhaps you've already even taken USMLE or Comlex once, you know that there's an increasing emphasis on not only ethics in general, but on communication and patient-centered care. So as part of this video, we will be talking about two major topics. One is proper communication, and specifically the ability to break bad news to patients and how you do that. And then two, we'll be focusing on patient-centered care, specifically establishing a definition of that term and talking briefly about what it is. Let's get started with breaking bad news. Breaking bad news refers to the process by which physicians communicate something to either patients or their families, which is usually received or perceived negatively. For example, a physician would break bad news if they had to tell a family member of a patient that the patient passed away. Now, when it comes to breaking bad news, both in real life but also on examinations, the most useful framework for doing it is referred to as the SPIKES model, S-P-I-K-E-S. -E and the SPIKES model is just an acronym that walks you through the proper steps to take and in what order in order to break bad news. So we're going to go through this model one at a time, discussing each element along the way. And this is the proper order for which you should do this. And as far as I know, this is the way that most ethical bodies and medical schools teach this subject. So this is very high yield. The first part of the spikes model is S, setting up. In this phase of breaking bad news, you want to prepare the environment. So if you're going to break bad news, you need to ensure that the space in which you are going to break the bad news is a private space. You also want to mentally rehearse what you're about to say so that when you deliver the news, you're delivering it both appropriately and effectively. You want to ensure the proper people are present for the breaking of the news. So for example, you're going to be there, the family, the patient, you're going to want a nurse, a social worker, somebody who is a spiritual advisor that works in the hospital. You know, you want the whole team there. Now remember, you're going to want to portray empathy and humanism, and in the setting up phase, you're kind of mentally rehearsing and preparing your brain to be able to flip that switch and display the empathy and humanism that drove you into medicine to begin with. Lastly, manage distractions. Turn off the pager. Turn off your cell phone. You don't want to be breaking bad news to a patient and you get a text from your grandmother. The P in the spikes model stands for perception. In this stage, you want to explore what the patient or the family knows about the medical issue at hand. So for example, if the patient passed away due to COVID, you would ask the family who you are about to break bad news to something along the lines of, what's your understanding of why Mr. Smith came to the hospital? And you're basically seeing, do they know that he had COVID and was put on a ventilator or do they have no idea whatso whatsoever? And the answer to that question kind of determines the family's reaction, and it will determine how you adjust when you break bad news accordingly. Listen. In this phase, you're listening to what the patient or the patient's family understands. Determine the mental preparedness of the, fam the family slash patient to receive the bad news. So this kind of ties into the first bullet point here. But in the perception phase of the spikes model, you're basically looking at the family or looking at the patient and trying to discern how ready they are to receive bad news. Next is I, invitation. At this phase, you're asking the patient or the family if they want to know the bad news. So you explicitly ask them, I have some bad news to tell you. Do you want me to tell it to you? And if their answer is no, you respect their wishes. Patients do not need to be told bad news every single time immediately. Next, K, knowledge. In this phase, you're going to warn the family that you're now going to tell them the bad news. So I know it sounds a little funny. It sounds a little robotic, but literally you look at the patient or you look at the family and you say to them, okay, 
I'm now going to tell you the bad news. So you have to let them know it's coming so it's not like a bomb gets dropped on them once you start explaining. Then you actually explain or give the bad news. You want to deliver the bad news in an easy to understand manner. So you don't want to use medical terminology. You want to use terms that the layperson will understand. Now don't be too blunt. Deliver the bad news in small portions, one at a time, checking to ensure that as you deliver it, the patient or the family understands what you're saying. The E in spikes stands for emotions. At this stage, you want to empathize with the patient or the family, and you want to try to put on your therapist hat and identify the emotions that are being expressed by the patient or their family. So you literally would look at them and say something such as, I see that this is devastating for you. So you want to identify the emotions that they're expressing. Allow the patient or their family to express their emotions freely. So if the patient or the family starts crying, allow it to happen. Silence during the conversation is not only acceptable, but it's normal. You don't need to fill the gaps with talking. Allow silence to be there. Lastly, the S stands for summary. At the end of breaking the bad news, you want to summarize the conversation from start to finish. Ask the patient or the family if they have any questions. Prepare a written summary if they want one so that they can take it home with them and understand further and explain to other people what happened. And then, if necessary, set an agenda for a follow-up meeting. That's the SPIKES model, and that's how you break bad news. Now let's talk about patient-centered care. When we talk about patient-centered care, it seems to be this like magical term that's showing up on exams, that's showing up on the in the ethics courses of medical school curricula. And I want to really hammer this on because it's not this mystical topic that we can't put our finger on. It's pretty easy, actually. So patient-centered care can be defined by three things. It's an understanding of a patient's values and or perspectives. It is a mindset or a framework which invites the patient to be the facilitator of change in a healthcare system. And lastly, it's an accommodation and an appreciation of a patient's cultural and diverse background. So patient-centered care in a nutshell is what patients see, value, and want. Patient-centered care is everybody in the healthcare system looking at patients individually as diverse peoples from various backgrounds and asking themselves, what can I do for this patient to make this patient feel comfortable, accepted, and valued in this healthcare system. Now that's patient-centered care. Now why do we care about patient-centered care? Well, patient-centered care has been shown to decrease healthcare costs, improve patient safety, improve accountability, and improve both physician and patient satisfaction. So the bottom line here for USMLE, Comlex, in-class exams is that patient-centered care is a term you're going to see. And it is the style or the intent of all healthcare delivered in all healthcare settings. And it really needs to be the, the integral foundation of all professional and personal relationships that occur in healthcare settings. So patient-centered care is a term that's showing up more and more often, but if you know the elements of it and you can understand that it's basically an appreciation and a valuing of a patient's diverse background and using their diverse background to make them facilitators of change and to make them feel comfortable as they navigate the healthcare system, you understand exactly what patient-centered care is.